Question 3. Alkene undergo addition reaction with the CO and H2 to form aldehyde. Okay, so for this question, you just need to follow uh, what uh, is the statement. So it just alkene with CO and H2 form aldehyde. And the equations given in the figure 3.1. Propene with CO and H2 will form the aldehyde. Compound A is butana, B is 2 methyl propana. A part 1 Define addition reaction. Okay, a reaction where two or more compounds react to form only one product. In this example, figure 3.1, CO and H2 added to the propene. So it's going to be two or more compounds, okay, and they react to form one product only. So just one product. A and B, they are isomers. Okay, part two. Aldehyde A and B, they are structural isomers. Structural, we have three types. We have chain isomerism, positional isomerism, and functional group isomerism. For this one, it should be chain isomerism because the aldehyde carbon, the carbonyl carbon is part of the naming means the main chain, the main carbon chain must include the carbonyl carbon, like butana. So this carbon is first carbon, second carbon, third carbon, and last carbon. So the carbonyl carbon in aldehyde is part of the structure, not a substituent. And for the compound B, the CHO, the carbonyl carbon, or the, this aldehyde group, it shouldn't be the substituents. It's actually part of the main carbon uh, chain. So this one should be first carbon, second carbon, and let's say this one, third carbon. Then this is the branch. So that's why A we call butana because it has four carbon main chain. B we call two methyl propana because it's three carbon main chain and one branch. So since they have different carbon main chain, four carbon and three carbon, it should be chain isomerism. However, the mark scheme okay, is mentioned positional isomerism, uh, which I not really agree. So it should be chain isomerism. Okay, name A. A again is Putana. Okay, part four. The complete reactions of propene with the CO and H2 produce A and B. 96% A and 4% B. Calculate the mass of A in this reaction when 5 times 10 power 3 kg of propene is used. Okay, first, you need to get the, uh, the mole of propene. Okay, use the mass that given, convert kg to gram. So therefore, it's 5 times 10 power 6 over 42. 42 is the molar mass of the propene. So you get the moles of propene. So first, you need to know, in order to form butana, actually one mole of propene will form one mole of butana. Okay, that's why we will get the moles of butana from the propene's calculation. So butana again is the A. To get the mass of A from this mass of propene, 
Okay, first we need to use the mole that we calculate just now, the moles of propene. Okay, times the molar mass of butana, which is seventy-two. So when this one times molar mass of the butana, so we know that this one is the. mass of the butana because this one is <coughs> mole this one is the molar mass mole times molar mass so you get the mass okay but this one is the is for hundred percent because in the question already uh, already say that 96 percent only so therefore this mass need to times 0 0.96 means 60 percent so you get this gram divided by thousand, you get this kg. Eight point two three times ten power three kg. Okay, part B. So A and B show reactions typical of aliphatic aldehyde. Okay, A undergo nucleophilic addition with the mixture of HCN and KCN forming C. So complete the diagram means the mechanism. Uh, you have to show all the charge dipole, lone pair, electrons, curly arrow, and so on. Okay, so how to start? First, you must put a dipole on the carbonyl groups. So partial positive on carbon, partial negative on oxygen. Okay, second, you need to start with this uh, cyanide, this cyanide. So make sure you uh, <clears throat> you put the cyanide CH sorry CN negative must show the lone pair and draw an arrow from the lone pair point to the partial positive carbon here. So therefore it indicates there is a new bond form between the C and this C. Okay, when this lone pair donates to this carbon from new bonding. All bonding must break. So the pi bonds here break and the two electrons shift to oxygen okay, and form the oxide. So this is the intermediate, it's the CC uh, new bonds form and the oxide here, the oxygens with lone pair. Now this one you must put negative because uh, this is the oxide, the oxygen gains the pair of electrons. Okay, this pair of electrons, this lone pair, so if you get protons from HCN, so it means it will undergo uh, protonation, it means uh, it will form new bonding with H. So when it's formed new bonding with H, the old bonding must break. CH bond break and these electrons move to the carbon to form cyanide. So cyanide now is regenerate. We know that cyanide is a catalyst because cyanide after is involved in the reaction is regenerate. Okay, then after the reaction, this cyanohydrins form. This is the uh, mechanisms that you should know how to draw. Okay, part two. So the three experiments uh, involving B, uh, B. B is an uh, aldehyde just now, right? So acidified. Uh, this one solutions turns orange to green so we know that orange to green must be dichromate and the chromium 3 so the reagent that used must be acidified potassium dichromate because this one is oxidizing agent it can oxidize the aldehyde to the carboxylic acid again So this is the B, yeah? B. So if you oxidize this aldehyde to carboxylic acid. 
Okay, and of course, since the B is an aldehyde, so a silver, silver mirror form, okay, so means the reagent is the Tholus reagent. And if let's say we add bromine to B, B has no CC double bond, that was, that's why no change. Okay, B, which has the molecular formula C4H8O, is oxidized using potassium permanganate 7. Oh, sorry, potassium manganate 7 or potassium permanganate. Complete the equations for the reaction. Okay, use the O with square bracket to represent the oxidizing agent. Uh, this one is, uh, you have to understand, when an aldehyde, for example, this one, when an aldehyde get oxidized, it will form carboxylic acid, it's actually just insert one oxygen between CH. So it will form COOH. So same thing happened for this B. C4H8O just need to add one oxygen to form the carboxylic acid. So it will become C4H8O2. Okay, part four. Sorry. Sorry. Part four. Okay, C is a chiral molecule. Circle any chiral center in the structure of C. Very easy. So this is a chiral carbon because it says one, two, three, four groups. So this one is a chiral carbon, right? Just circle that. Okay, part C. When propene reacts with CO and excess H2, an alkane and a mixture of alcohols form. Okay, so it's very clear. Propene, okay, it can form alkane, means uh, the CC double bonds now is being saturated to form alkane. So it will form propane, right? C3HA. And it can form alcohol, so we know that. So this CC double bond, it will add the CO and H2, so means extra carbon added. So it will be the alcohol like this extra one carbon right so and the molecular formula is C4H10O uh, so this is the uh, one of the possible alcohol that can form when at CO the extra carbon and the H2 right which to form the OH and so on right so therefore molecular formula for the alkane is C3HA for the alcohol, it must be extra one more carbon. So C4H10O. This is just one example. Okay, part D. Uh, state and explain the effect of using catalyst in this reaction. Okay, these uh, reactions are between the ethene COH2 and the, from the aldehyde. Okay, so we know that Catalyst always increase the rate of reaction. Why? Because it's providing alternative reaction pathway with lower EA. Okay, this one is understandable. Most of you uh, should know okay, what is a catalyst. Okay, part two. Explain why yield of the propana increase when over pressure increase. Very easy. Propana is this one, the product. So when pressure increase, it will go move, it will shift to the lesser mole side. Because left hand side, three moles of gas, and the right hand side, just one mole. When pressure increase, it will go to the lesser, lesser mole side. So it will shift to right. Equilibrium move right, okay, where it has fewer moles of gas there. Okay, part three. Calculate the delta HR here when the delta HF given. So very easy. If delta HF given for all the uh, reactants and products, so you just need to use the delta HF of the products minus delta HF of the reactant. Product is the propana. 
reactant is C2H4 and CO. This one not okay, not really involved. No need to uh, use this one. Okay, so therefore just substitute the values inside negative 187 minus okay, 52 plus negative 111. So you get negative 128. Remember again is the delta HF of products minus delta HF of the reactants, these two reactants. H2 is 0, delta HF is 0. Okay, the reaction mixture is called to collect the propana as a liquid. Identify all types of van der Waals force that present in this propana. This one is quite uh, quite uh, important and you need to know uh, the different IMF or van der Waals force in this molecule. Okay, we know that propana is the uh, polar molecules because the carbonyl group itself is has dipole partial positive and negative partial positive on carbon partial negative on oxygen so means when another propana molecules approach so the partial positive will attract to the partial negative so means between this molecule it will form PDPD because the partial positive will attract the partial negative so it's formed the PD PD forces permanent dipole permanent dipole forces but you have to understand propana is has alkyl group so the alkyl group here the CH3 CH2 this alkyl group it's actually has the ID ID force the instantaneous dipole induced dipole forces because this part is the hydrocarbon and between the hydrocarbon group or alkyl group Okay, is because it's non non polar, non polar part, so it has the ID ID forces. The larger of this group, stronger the ID ID. That's why we know that in this organic molecule, it has the polar part and non polar. Polar part is PD PD, non polar is ID ID. That's why it has two, instantaneous dipole induced dipole and permanent dipole, permanent dipole. That's all. Thank you.